Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, we're going to give it about two more minutes before we get started, waiting for a few more folks to hop on. But uh, for the folks who got on on time, appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we're going to get started real soon. Um, I want to thank Jonathan McKinney, who's also on the line as well, who's helping uh, run the webinar tonight. I think we'll just give it another minute before we get started. But again, thank y'all for coming on. I know for sure. I'm logging on. Can you still hear me clearly? I can make it on. All right, sounds good. All right, y'all. So welcome to uh, the Youth and College Division uh, Youth and College uh, webinar for tonight. We're doing a kickstarting a voter turnout campaign for Region 3. Uh, so real quick, I want to introduce myself. My name is Wisdom Cole. I'm the National Youth and College Organizing Manager. So essentially what that means is that I work with all our youth and college units around organizing, around trainings that are happening all over the country. And so this is the third webinar in our series around civic engagement. And so this is the beginning part in terms of how to kickstart a voter turnout campaign. So tonight we'll be going over the agenda. Um, we'll have some greetings from our region three leaders. Then after that, we'll talk about voter registration. Then we'll talk about base building. And then we will also have a field example in terms of how to start a voter turnout campaign from folks from the Ohio State University. Then we'll have about 10 minutes for uh, question and answer and we will finish up our webinar for tonight. So we should be finishing up about uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Again, um, for the most up-to-date information in terms of what's happening in the youth in college, definitely follow us on our Instagram page at NACC, NACP underscore YC. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with our Region 3 board member, DeJury. He's gonna give a couple greetings, uh, so DeJury. We can't hear you, the jury. You are so right. You cannot hear me. Um, I'm going to do it again. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you for joining us for the call today. Um, this is a very important um, call this midterm election, and I'm glad that um, people such as Wisdom and Jonathan um, were able to organize this and for us to get together, as well as Jamal Watkins, VP of Civic Engagement. Um, I think it's just very important that we focus on our midterm elections and how we can get millennials such as ourselves out to vote, not only register, but actually at the polls voting. Um, yesterday, I, myself, as well as other staff um, of the NAACP, we went out and we protested against um, the Kavanaugh hearing. And the constant question was, um, you know, does voting, does, you know, how do you feel about voting um, has consequences? And I completely agree that voting has consequences, and that's why it's so even more important that we go out and vote in midterm elections, because I think that has even more of a bigger impact than our presidential elections that happens every four years. So, again, um, I'm glad to be on this call today. I'm glad to learn, and I hope that come 
20, uh, come November 6th of 2018, we see some really um, changers, some, you know, game changers and some um, uh, shakers in our in our state legislature, our, our governors, and our gov governorships, and our, our U.S. and, um, and Senate. So, um, again, I'm glad to be here, and I'll be turning it over to Ms. Kelly Cunningham, who is our adult rep um, for Region 3. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Kelly Cunningham. I am absolutely excited to um, have this training for our region. A little bit disappointed at the numbers. So, um, those of you who are on this call, I do appreciate that. And I hope that you guys soak up everything and take it back to your chapters, councils, and your states. Um, this is what we've been begging for from uh, our national office and our leaders, and I'm absolutely excited that everything is aligned properly in one of the best fashions that I've seen in a long time as far as training and equipping our chapters and our councils to do the work of the NAACP. So I'm absolutely excited um, for what is to come and for our greatness to shine in the Youth and College Division. As always, I'm always a phone call, a text, or email away. And I appreciate you all's dedication uh, to the NAACP, and I appreciate you all being such wonderful um, young folks to work with. That is all, and I shall pass to Kyra Mitchell. Hey everybody, I'm Kyra Mitchell. I am one of the Region 3 representatives um, for the Youth and College Division on the National Youth Work Committee. Um, I just think it's really important. So I first wanna say thank you to the national staff for having this training specific just for Region 3 because it is really important that we learn these tools, especially with the election coming up. Um, people are always gonna try to silence us as youth, but our voice is gonna be heard through our votes. And that's why it's gonna be so important that not only that we register like DeJory said, but we also make sure we get to the polls and also make sure like when you get to those polls on November 6th, make sure like you don't go just by yourself. Make sure you take some friends, some family, uh, just people. You can even turn into an Uber that day. Just make sure you get some other people out to the polls and we show up in numbers because this is when our voices are really gonna matter. Nice. Thank you so much, Kyra. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you so much, Desiree. I really appreciate your words and continued support and leadership within this organization, especially within Region 3. And I just want to echo what Kelly said in terms of continuing to get more people to show out, to turn out, right? We're having more and more trainings. Um, this is the third of 15 webinars that we're we'll having this uh, this fall. And so there'll be a few more national ones. We want to continue to have more people turn out. And so encourage people that you know who are potential leaders, people who are in leadership, people who are not here tonight to continue to, to be part of this process. So real quick, um, I want to introduce our one of our NAACP Youth and College trainers, Davon Fields. He is an official cert certified NAACP Youth and College trainer from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He recently attended the NAACP Youth and College Electoral Boot Camp, which was a four-day intensive training um, from voter registration to voter mobilization and all the steps in between. And so I'll give him a minute to introduce himself real quick. Peace and love, family. Glad to be here. Uh, can you all hear me? Yep. Okay, yeah. cool. So I serve as the uh, third vice president of the Greater Grand Rapids NACP Youth Council. I'm also member for chair and junior justice chair for the State Youth and College of Michigan. I'm looking forward to presenting this information with you guys. I think it's very, very important information. Um, so you all can spread it with your branches, units, so on and so forth. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Javon. So just a quick reminder of our goals for 2018. So number one, we want to increase voter turnout, reg voter registration for 18 to 25 year olds. So thinking about who are people who are infrequent voters between the ages of 18 to 25 and how do we increase the voter registration between that age group. Next, we want to make sure that we begin to uh, build our base, right? We talked that membership is power. So uh, when we're building our base, it's, uh, it's going to be in relationship to shifting relationships of power within uh, different organizations, within our units. And then last but not least, um, how do we educate and turn out people of color in our community? Um, in this presentation, we're gonna mainly focusing on the first two in terms of how do we increase voter registration and how do we base build? 
So tonight I'll be talking about increasing voter registration and uh, Javon will be talking about uh, building our base. So tools for voter registration. So when you're thinking about voter registration, you wanna think about canvassing. So canvassing is essentially thinking about what are areas where there's high enough foot traffic where you can have conversations with passerbys, right? And so uh, a lot of times people ask, you know, why do we canvass? Why is it important to canvass, right? This is a great way to connect with infrequent voters, right? So people who are in your community, who are on your campus, who you know are not necessarily showing up to vote, right? So thinking about uh, incoming freshmen who are just new to the campus, who are just turning 18, how can you connect with those folks? Uh, People who um, don't necessarily come from a culture of voting or in their family, how can you connect with those folks as well? Um, the second part is thinking about how to get vote people who do vote to pledge to vote, right? So people uh, do turn out to vote, but they might know may not, they might not know uh, where to go vote. They might not know uh, what's on the the ballot, right? So this is a really great way to get people to pledge to vote, so you can connect them with the right amount of information. And then last but not least, this is a great way to recruit volunteers, right? Again, I say. We say in this organization that membership is power, right? So by building membership, by building volunteers, we begin to show power, we begin to have power in terms of our organization and the work that we do and how we move. So when you're thinking about canvassing tools, and real quick, just a shout out, um, if you check out, if you're on the, web, the webinar application, there are five handouts that are available, um, one on tabling, one on class wraps, one on door knocking, and one on phone, phone banking. Feel free to download those, use those within your units, um, connect with people in terms of these resources because uh, these are the tools that are gonna be necessary for your, your canvassing. So when we're talking about tabling, tabling is an essential tool to canvassing, right? So being able to set up a table in a high traffic area such as the student union, the dining hall, um, maybe football games that are happening, any area where there are a lot of people uh, trafficking from day to day, this is a, a classic and essential way to connect with people who may be infrequent voters. Uh, the next essential, and I think what I would even say one of the most critical tools is the class wrap, right? So the class wrap allows you to reach a large audience of students all at once. And so what I want you all to start thinking about is how can you make it fun? How can you make it exciting? How can you talk to, to teachers or professors that you already have relationships with uh, so that you can uh, reach a, a larger audience of students, right? So when you go to these uh, classes, you want to bring a sign-up sheet so you can get the student information. Uh, maybe think about what are possibly some legal study classes, some law classes, if there's ethnic studies on your campus, African American studies, classes where you know that students that you are trying to reach are in and that you can uh, get connected with, right? So what this requires is you doing research. What are places or classes that are happening or being offered this semester that you can tap into, that you can talk to, and that you can work with professors to advertise around our message. Again, uh, real quick, just a shout out. If you have any questions, there is a, a, a question box below where you can type in questions. At the end of our presentation, we'll be uh, taking 10 minutes to address any questions. So if you think about questions as we do the presentation, definitely feel free to drop those questions down below. The next two tools are door knocking, right? So door knocking is another uh, classic tool that we use in the canvas. So um, when I was in college, something that we called we had was called uh, the dorm storm. So what we would do is that we get permission from either the housing office or the RA of a dorm and maybe look for targeted places where we can uh, talk to specific students, right? So earlier I talked about freshmen, right? So a lot of people are have already either started school or getting ready to start school and uh, the freshmen tend to move in earlier than everybody else. And so that's a perfect opportunity to connect with freshman students or even transfer students, right? You know, a lot of times the transfer population is neglected. And I think it's very important to tap into those people because a lot of times they might not be connected with information or uh, things that are going on on campus. And this is a perfect way to connect with them in terms of turning out to vote, as well as a perfect opportunity to build membership, right? Think of this voter turnout campaign as a, a tool to also build up your NAACP unit on your campus, um, in your city, in your community. So there's two types of door knocking, right? So there's a, a targeted door knocking where you're targeting a specific list of people, right? So maybe you're talking to a resource center and seeing if there is a, a list of people that you can contact and uh, go and, and make one-on-one uh, -on -one contact with to get them to sign up to vote or pledge to vote. Um, or maybe you're talking to uh, a residential housing office, right? Whatever it is, right? Making sure that you know who your audience is. 
Then there's blind door, knock, blind door knocking, which means that you're going to every door, right? So based on your campus, and what I'm going to say is that you probably know your campus the best or you know your community the best, thinking about what is going to be most beneficial for your campus as well as what is going to uh, use your time the most efficiently. And then last but not least, phone banking, right? Phone banking is another classic style, another classic tool that we use to collect data um, around voter registration, right? So we want to be databasing the people that we are talking to so that we can contact them throughout our campaign to tell them uh, to pledge to vote, to tell them about any events that are coming up, to tell them about what is their their uh, their poll location, right? Different information that they might not have. It's important to be able to communicate to them. And so we are making sure we are phone banking, right? And maybe you have like a, a digital download Friday where you um, have your volunteers come together and phone bank and making sure that they have the right information and are contacting people either on a weekly basis or semi-weekly basis, whatever you feel is necessary to, to contact your people. So next we wanna talk about putting on an actual voter registration drive. So the first thing you wanna think about when you're putting on a voter registration drive is what is the place, what is the date, and what is the time of the registration event, right? So say that you went into a, a class and you said, hey, on Friday in the quarry, you're gonna have a voter registration drive. We're gonna be having t-shirts, shirts, uh, pens and pencils and stickers. We're talking about a little bit about what the NAACP does and signing up people to um, to register to vote. Um, so you want to make sure you have an accurate place, date, and time. Usually, what I like to do is think think about think about it two weeks in advance, right? So two to three weeks in advance, you should be planning, making a backwards timeline where you have your date set and you're thinking about what are the, what the pieces necessary to execute this event, right? Uh, second, you want to connect with any event organizers for permission, right? So some campuses, you need to uh, talk to your dean of students. Maybe there's an organizing body that is in charge or gives permission for you to be able to have events. Connect with those people early enough so that you don't have to worry about permits or any kind of things, right? Maybe you want to have music playing, right? If there's um, some kind of uh, ordinance against noise violations or something like that, you want to make sure that you're compliant with that and making sure that um, you're not going to have any trouble when it comes to actually putting your event on. Step three is you want to build your team leadership. And uh, Javon's going to talk a little bit about that later when we talk about base building, but making sure that you have a strong team of people who are going to be leading uh, your voter registration drive or event. Uh, step four is you want to get voter registration forms. So oftentimes I get the question, where do I get voter registration forms? So in terms of getting voter registration forms, you want to think there, there are some universal forms that work uh, for some states. And so you can go on and download them but they're also available at your local board of elections or county offices. Uh, they're usually available at your local library, the DMV, the U.S. Post Office, and connect with um, people who are there to get a, a massive amount of voter registration forms. So step five, you wanna make sure you have your supplies. Do you have clipboards? Do you have pens? Do you have tables? Do you have stickers? Do you have buttons? Do you have t-shirts, right? Um, if you were on the very first call that we had, we talked about having, if you get 500 voter registration uh, forms in uh, by your second week, that we will give you a youth and college vote box, right? So in that youth and college vote box, we will have uh, youth and college t-shirts, youth and college stickers, youth and college pins, uh, pencils, pens, uh, uh, flyers, you know, different things that we can use that are youth and college branded. So, but we want to see that first commitment of being able to get 500 registered voters, right? And uh, we talked about the, the math of doing voter registration, right? If a person is doing voter registration for an hour a day, they can get up to, you know, five to seven people registered to vote, especially in a high traffic area, right? And so they're doing that Monday through Friday, you're getting about 25 people registered to vote. If you have 10 volunteers, that's 250. So by week two, you should be able to have 500 people registered. To vote. Um, step six, you want to publicize your event, right? So if your if your unit has a an Instagram, and I just want I just want to shout out all the Instagrams I've been seeing, um, all the people who have been reposting our stuff, who've been posting about their events, who've been posting for the membership drive. It's very very beautiful to see uh, the work that y'all are doing on the ground and continuing to do. So you really want to make sure you're publicizing. So are you posting on social media? Are you posting on campus? Are you um, making sure that it's visible to all students who are, uh, that you want to reach? Uh, step seven, you want to train your volunteers, which uh, Javon will talk about a little bit later, but making sure your volunteers are trained and ready to go. Um, are there scripts that you're having your volunteers read or memorize that they're going to be talking to uh, people who are going to be potential voters, right? And we'll talk a little bit later about uh, what a potential script can look like. 
uh, next you're going to execute, right? So you're going to get people to register to vote who aren't registered to vote. And the people who are already registered to vote, you're going to get them to pledge to vote so that you can get their information. And then you can step nine, database, database, database for our, our voter contact program, right? So we're making sure that we're contacting people throughout our voter turnout campaign so people know uh, relevant information towards our November 6th date. So when you're thinking about crafting your script, right, these are some essential uh, basic things to think about when crafting your script. So the first question you're asking people, right, you're, you're talking to them, you're reading them, and you're asking them, are you registered to vote, right? If they say no, you register them. If they say yes, but they're like, oh, I'm not registered to vote at the current address that I'm at, what do you do? You re-register them. If they say yes, but they haven't received any kind of confirmation, you re-register them, right? And then if they're saying, you know, yes, all good, I'm registered at my current location, um, I know what's up, you know, I believe in voting, you want to get them to pledge to vote so you can get their information, and you can database that them for further voter contact, right? So this is a, a basic script, right? You might you know, make a little bit more detailed or uh, add some more information so that people can uh, connect with the people on your campus and as well as talk about what things are happening for your campus. But this is the basic trip that you should be going on when you're talking about voter registration. So when you're thinking about other voter registration tools, right, we already talked about tabling, class wraps, door knocking. Another good tool is building coalitions. Is so that means connecting with other likewise um, or similar organizations or student groups that are doing similar work to you that you can uh, build coalition with. So you're dividing the labor up. So if you are working to, to reach 500 uh, voter registrations by the end of the second week of campus, right, maybe there's other groups on campus, um, other uh, groups that are uh, culturally diverse, other groups that are engaged in the process that you can work with so you can divide up the labor. We talked about phone banking. Another good way, uh, another good tool is making sure that you're, you have an email list so you're constantly emailing people, right? We talked about that that digital download Friday where you're making sure that you're texting people, you're emailing people, you're databasing, you're phone banking. These are all good ways to, to have that constant connection with people. Um, if you have people who are good at, you know, Social media at design, you can design different leaflets or brochures, something that constantly keeps people in the know about what's going on. Um, some potential events that have been seen around the country uh, that uh, really support voter registration are things like Souls to the Polls. Um, if there's a football game, how can you um, table at a football game or make an announcement at a football game um, so people are registering to vote because that's another high traffic area where people are coming in. Maybe you're hosting a debate watch, right? We're gathering people together to watch a debate um, that is relevant to your your community to your county and at that debate you're registering people to vote and having discussion about what's on the ballot um are there online recruitment ways how can we use our social media to, to recruit people to come out to our different events uh maybe we're hosting a town hall where we have a speaker and who is talking about the importance of voting and what it means for the black community what does it mean for students of color what does it mean for communities of color right to, to show out and vote and how our vote has power Maybe we're, uh, we're hosting mock debates, right? And I've seen mock debates held really well where people are, are talking from both sides, being able to discuss the issues to help people uh, inform voters, right? And um, as we talk about this process, right, we're talking about starting with voter registration, then moving into voter education, and then moving into mobilization, right? So this is a really great way to, to tackle both voter registration and education at the same time. Maybe we're hosting parties, right? I've seen a lot of people say, you know, pledge to vote and you can get into this party, right? And so thinking about what are um, creative ways to get people to turn out to vote, to turn out to register, to pledge, right? I wanna push all the think um, outside the box so you can uh, get the largest amount of people to. So in your mind, you might be thinking, wisdom, how do I do this, right? This is, this is like, you're asking me to do a lot of different things um, all at once and you're in your mind thinking how. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn over to, to Javon to talk a little bit about uh, base building so that we can do an effective voter registration campaign. Thank you, Wisdom. Um, so we talk about base building. The sole purpose is to increase the power and operation of the Youth and College Division. Now to do that, you um, to actively recruit and build new leaders that will stay engaged even after elections. So that means year round. Um, we think about recruiting people, you want to think about not just recruiting volunteers, but also building leaders so they can make decisions and, on behalf of the campaign. Sit next. 
next slide. All right, so going off base building, elements of base building start with recruitment and identification. So recruiting people throughout the community, this will help gain publicity and help spread the word out. Identifying uh, leaders who will be able to make decisions that will benefit the campaign while also finding out leaders who will be committed to, uh, to the whole process. Now, relationship building, that is when you are gaining volunteers, you wanna form a bond and a trusting relationship with these volunteers that you're trying to get. Uh, this will also help you to understand and gain an understanding of who they are and what they are passionate about. Now, going into political education, this is also making sure that your leaders that you're trying to build, um, that you identify and that are uh, dedicated to the growth of the campaign while they understand the plan of action and its strategies. So connecting that with relationship building, if you understand what that a person is uh, passionate about or what their um, strengths are, it's easy to put them in place uh, that will actually benefit the campaign. Now, engagement and empowerment. Um, by now, you have figured out what you want them to do based on their strengths and what, and, uh, what they are willing to do. This will also uh, help you give them clear expectations for what, what you want them to do. So if a person is like, they're really good, their strength is like public speaking and persuading people, you will have them out um, trying to get people to register to vote by persuading them. And, um, pushing them to go out and reach out to different people. Next slide. So recruiting and training volunteers. So this right here, if you met a volunteer, right, it's an example. So you met Leora Jones. You found out that she's a second year student, that she lives on campus, and that her major is graphic design, right? So this illustration right here, is how you would have a conversation with somebody, right? The, um, based on issues, values, capacity, interests, contributions, right? So issue, think of the head, what comes to mind? So Leora says that what comes to mind is police brutality, the Black Lives Matter movement, and justice, right? Her heart, what she cares about, right? Her values is the love of the community, Black pride, and dedication, right? Um, you learn that capacity at the foot, she's a, what, she, what she's doing, what she's working right now, she's a full-time student and she's uh, doing a work-study job. Now in the stomach, you know, is uh, what is like um, things that she cares about also is a uh, people of color, her family, her friends, and most importantly that herself and her contributions to the hand. What is she handing out? What is she doing? She, uh, she has good communication skills, marketing tech, and networks. So now that you built that relationship with Leora Jones, you gotta figure out how would she be an asset to the uh, voter turnout campaign? Well, you would say, okay, her major is graphic design, okay? And that she actually has uh, you know, interest in the Black Lives Matter, so the Black community and justice, right? And she has a love for the Black community and she's hardworking, right? And her, she's good at communicating. So I would put her as a uh, social media, you know, or um, designing flyers or posters that would grab people's attention. So that would get people engaged because the youth, we primarily uh, do most of our, um, our networking through social media and she's following up with different designs uh, that would, are appealing to people. They won't say, okay, this is just something that, you know, people are trying to get me to do. I actually want to get involved in this. So talk about training and tracking volunteers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So build on things this person is already good at and likes to do, right? So we go back to you know social media example right um if a person is really good at being on top of social media be on top of uh you know getting things uh out there then 
that's somebody you that you want to designate to that task. You want to assign biteable tasks that are measurable. So measurable tasks. So for example, if you're trying to recruit different volunteers or get people to uh, vote, register to vote, you would say, okay, within five hours, I want to get six people registered to vote. That's a measurable goal. You, so you said that I want to get five people by this time. So that way, not only that it makes it um, it's a goal, but it's a challenge. So now you're working yourself to figure out ways of how I'm going to get these people to either vote or um, volunteer within five hours. The number three includes specific, uh, specific about timelines, expectation, and accountability. So this is all about structure and balance, selling, setting clear expectations and requirements that should be met by a certain time. So that will also include accountability. Number four, as individuals uh, prove that they can handle particular responsibilities, increase their level of responsibility. So that also uh, is keeping them engaged, keeping them more active. So they're not repeating the same things that they're doing different challenges that will um, benefit the campaign. So building a winning team. So you have a canvas coordinator. That person is identifying high traffic locations and prepare and dis distribute, uh, distribute and recollect canvas uh, materials. And you have your volunteer recruitment coordinator responsible for reaching out to volunteers, confirming volunteer canvas signups and managing volunteer sign up, sign in on canvas day. Then you have your resources coordinator that this person helps to find and secure the place to meet before and after the canvas. Then you have, last but not least, your trainer. This person should be an experienced canvasser who can talk through how, how canvassing works and as well explain why the people you're contacting are important. And real, real quick, Javon, um, so these are just the basic four right uh, roles needed to, to build a winning team. But thinking about your campus and thinking about your community, maybe you need more people, maybe you need less people, maybe you have uh, really strong trainers, but you don't necessarily have uh, someone to uh, recruit volunteers, right? Uh, making right. sure you're tailoring this towards uh, your school and what you need. And this is just the, uh, the foundation, just the platform you can build off of this. So best practices, um, so you have a mentor and a trainer of volunteers. You can build community with volunteers, firm acts, firm commitments, have clear expectations. So like I said before, um, setting goals, measurable goals, and um, also challenges that will um, keep you pushing. And then make time for volunteers. So that in this case, you know, like I said before, relationship building, right? You want to understand that uh, people have other things to do, you know? So getting them involved um, in an aspect that you want them to uh, be dedicated to the campaign, but also keeping in mind of what they have, their other responsibilities. And then share decision-making power. So it shouldn't be reliant on just one person. Just make sure that everybody has an opportunity to speak and make decisions that will benefit the campaign. You wanna build other leaders so they can make decisions that will benefit the campaign. And last but not least, you wanna thank, praise, and celebrate those leaders, those volunteers that are putting forth the work to build this campaign and also recruit volunteers or get people registered to vote. Volunteers are the key Major, major key to successful voter turnout campaign. We're gonna keep that in mind. You can't, this is not, uh, this is not work that anybody can do by themselves. They have to build a team to, um, to achieve goals and accomplish uh, some of the goals such as educating the black community on why voting is important and um, some aspects like that. Thank you, Javon. And, uh, in these kind of situations, I usually, I usually think about this uh, South African principle of Ubuntu, which just means I am because we are. And essentially meaning that we can't do this work alone, 
but that we need a community of, peop- of, f- of people, of folks who are dedicated, who are committed because I exist because we exist and we exist because I exist. And so really thinking about how can you connect with people and uh, build volunteers and build membership, right? Because we said again, right? Membership is power, people is power. So thank you, Javon, for that presentation on how to build your base. Thank uh, you for having me. So next, I wanted to introduce uh, Jeanette Rhodes. She is the NAACP Youth and College President at the Ohio State University. In addition to that, she actually is another of our youth and college uh, trainers who's at our electoral boot camp training last weekend. And so she also went through that uh, four-day intensive training as well. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about the work that is happening at Ohio State University. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Jeanette Rhodes. I hope you all can hear me. Is that fine? Yep, you're good. Yes. Okay. Um, so this year, um, specifically this September and upcoming October, uh, our deadline for voter registration is the 9th. Uh, we're really trying to be a lot more strategic and intentional about finding fun, creative ways to get our campus and our community engaged. Um, I find that the NAACP for a lot of schools kind of holds this um, almost like motherly or paternal role where we help delegate and get other organizations involved on campus. So I'll speak a little about how that looks on our campus at Ohio State. Uh, But this upcoming Tuesday, this is really our first event geared towards voter registration. We're doing a program called Canvassing Our Campus. Uh, Me and our secretary, Taylor Bonus, are going to lead a discussion uh, on canvassing, door knocking, tabling, how to design uh, the most impact we can on our campus. And then we're also going to make it a fun event and actually canvas um, and paint on canvases and hang those around the room and things like that. So that's going to jump off uh, getting our members engaged on why voting is important. After that, we're going to be a little more strategic in how to get the bulk of the campus involved. And so by doing that, we're going to have a voter registration fair on September 23rd. And the way this fair is going to be organized, we're going to start with a slight informational section. Uh, We have a lot of professors who have volunteered to give quick, short um, speeches on why voting is important and kind of the history and backlash people of color have faced since we got the right to vote. After that, we're going to set up demonstrations, kind of dissecting the different issues that we're going to be voting on and different candidates. Uh, views and opinions on certain things. And then we're also going to provide uh, food just to attract the masses. Now, when I said that NAACP has um, this role where we delegate to other organizations, the way we're uh, contributing that into our program is encouraging the Black student organizations, whether it's fraternities, sororities, our Black Student Association, um, whatever, LSA, our Latino Student Association, we're all inviting them into this voter registration challenge where we're going to see which organization can register the most students and adults within our city to vote. And then we're going to try to come up with a bunch of different raffles to award uh, the top one and two um, registrators. And the reason we're doing that is we recognize our chapter is still developing. We have about 34 members. We're trying to delegate each member to at least register 10 people. Uh, So that's 340, but we would like to have a greater outreach than that. So we're hoping by building that coalition that Javon spoke so nicely about earlier, we'll up our numbers and increase our impact. So that's what our September looks like. The challenge starts from the fair, September 23rd, up into the 8th. Uh, NAACP, our members will also still be canvassing on the 9th, that last day. But prior to that, we're going to tally who our winners are. So, And that is all. So, (laughs) Nice. Thank you so much, Jeanette. I really appreciate that. Right. And just really quickly, just kind of uh, listening to what uh, she said she was talking about uh, canvassing, right? She talked about connecting with community partners. 
She talked about hosting events. Um, she talked about uh, delegating and working with like-minded organizations, right? All these things that are necessary and part of uh, developing a voter registration, a successful voter registration and voter turnout campaign. All right, um, so that's bringing us towards the end of our presentation, but really quickly, we wanted to talk a little bit um, about how the youth council members um, may be able to use this um, outside in a college setting, right? And so uh, for me, just some initial thoughts thinking about how we can do this outside of a college setting, right? So when you're thinking about a door knocking, um, for instance, right, thinking about what are particular communities in your county, right, where you, where there are people who uh, don't tend to vote, right? So again, like I, I talked about at the beginning, like it's going to require some research and thinking about um, what are, where, where those communities are at, right? And if you need some support in doing that, um, definitely feel free to email, email us at youthincollege at naacpnet.org. Um, after this, there will also be a survey that comes out um, about the webinar. With, we'll have my contact information, and so we can uh, work together to brainstorm some ideas. Uh, but thinking about uh, how do you connect with even like local community partners who are also doing this work as well. Um, I know someone else wanted to speak on this as well. Um, I can. Um, another thing that I think is really effective with voter registration or just kind of advocating for any cause is to kind of see what's already there and build upon it. And um, that could be other voter registration outreaches where you can join in in that effort, but it's also seeing what's already happening in the community. If you're a startup organization and you may not have the funds necessary to put on a big event, um, I, I know this was mentioned earlier, but see if there's concerts or games or anything that's already attracting a big community, especially when you're trying to tap into to people that do not go to your school. Um, and then just see if you can have two or three members on a rotation or on a, on a schedule to help register people to vote in those particular environments. Um, so any high traffic areas, just be kind of strategic and post your members there. That's perfect. All right. That's exactly what we're thinking about. That's exactly where we want to go to. Um, and thinking about, I know some, some folks have youth councils that are mostly in the community. And some folks have uh, college chapters, which are on uh, college campuses, right? And so thinking about how can we use uh, similar similar tactics that may uh, work in the community. Um, I know the jury wanted to say something as well. Yes, um, really quick. Thank you for the words that kind of um, that were said earlier. I can kind of reiterate. Um, so. Um, just, I know something when I was a youth council president in Saginaw, Michigan, a couple of things we did were we, we went out to football games, we went out to different things like that. But we also um, talked to our high school principals and we actually went in through the high schools and we registered um, the students who will be turning 18 um, before the election. So just trying to, you know, go again with the community building and partnerships, trying to figure out how you can um, get those students and identify those students and make sure that they vote. Um, because like I said, a lot of people um, are turn, they turn 18 um, before um, election day or they have just, they, they just got out of school and things like that. So um, I just encourage all youth councils, regardless if there's a college campus in your um, city or not, um, to make sure that you're taking that risk of going out and um, getting those who might be 18 or just about to turn 18 before the election day. Nice. Thank you to Jerry for that. appreciate that. Uh, so again, uh, in, if you're on the webinar application, you can uh, drop a question below. We're going to look at some questions right now. So uh, the slideshow will be available for you to take back to your college unit. So after this uh, webinar is over, you're going to get an email with a survey. And so after you finish the survey, um, I will send you a copy of this presentation for you to use. So we got a couple extra minutes 
Um, so if any fo folks would like to add any questions or um, any thoughts around the presentation, maybe any best practices, uh, we'll take that right now. And another, another thing I just kind of want to um, throw out there um, in terms of like some conversations I've had with uh, some folks is thinking about, okay, thinking about the NAACP and thinking about this as an opportunity to, to build our base, right? Uh, regardless of uh, folks' folks feeling from past experiences and things like that, the more and more members we have, the more and more people we're able to, to add to our base, uh, we begin to shift the culture of, of the NAACP, right? Thinking about you know people who may have been off-putted in the past or things like that. When we were able to add new folks or get new blood into our space, we're able to have a diversity of ideas that can begin to shift the culture of the work that we do, right? Uh, the more I, I really believe that, you know, the more and more people that we have in our space, more and more people who are really interested in doing this work, right, the, the more we'll be able to move towards uh, a place where we are, are doing what we say that we're doing. Any other questions or comments? When is the Region 5 webinar? Region 5 webinar is going to be this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you all so much for the love and support. I appreciate that, seeing all these comments. Um, Kyra or Kelly, is there anything that y'all would like to add in terms of just uh, anything that are happening particularly towards Region 3? I know there's a, a retreat coming up as well. Um, yes, our Region 3 uh, Youth and College Retreat is coming up in October, October 12th and 13th. It'll be in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, it'll be full of a lot of leadership um, opportunities for those within Region 3. So uh, just make sure you register. We have it on Eventbrite for registrations right now. And if anybody needs the link, um, just let me know. I guess I can send it out to email or any other way that you guys would need to get it. Appreciate that. And what's, do you know what's going to, can you talk a little bit about what's going to go on at the, the retreat? Yes. So currently we have a few different trainings planned, um, compliance trainings and leadership trainings, uh, different activities like that. A few voter registration stuff. Um, a lot of just different training activities, just so we have a lot more training within our region um, for the youth and college division so we can move forward and be strong in the future. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, so if you're Region 3, definitely tap into that. Definitely get connected with those retreats and those trainings, right? Uh, these webinars are really helpful, but also being able to form these on-the-ground, face-to-face interactions are extremely helpful and allow us to, to do uh, a lot of the work and also build solidarity with one another. Uh, real quick, if you are on the webinar application, there, again, like I said before, there are four, there are five documents, actually, but there are four documents in particular, there's one on class wraps, one on door knocking, one on phone banking, and one on um, tabling. Uh, these are really great resources to the actual like steps and how to to do these things, right? So if you're having trouble in terms of how do I form a class wrap, how do I build up my, um, how do I table, how do I door knock, how do I get these, you know, these different connections that we want to connect with? Uh, these are really great resources to give to your volunteers, right? So if you're talking about training material. This is the training material and. Again, as we're updating our website and updating our, our content, these will be more readily available, but definitely tap into these, download them, take them, and uh, distribute them to your people. So I see, uh, Kelly, are you still on the line?
Um, so there's a question to think about, you know, when you start partnerships with several organizations um, in your community and um, some of the folks come to hear the, the name NAACP and folks have different opinions on what the NAACP means and what the NAACP is doing, right? I, I think it's really important that when we talk to these people, talk to us about, you know, the culture that, that we bring, right? The culture that you are bringing as a youth council or a college chapter that is, um, in terms of what direction that you are, you're moving forward in this year, right? You know, things um, have happened, but I think when we're continuing to build our membership and to build our power, we are, are showing that we are beginning to change as an organization and that we are an organization that is supportive of the, the youth and the youth doing uh, this electoral work that we, we say that we're about, right? And so I think it's constantly bringing in new people who can also uh, speak to their experiences within NAACP. Because I think even in my short time within NAACP, I've seen so much of how folks who have grown up in this organization have become strong leaders who can uh, communicate, but also can do work. And I think what we're trying to do this year is to uh, enforce uh, that those communication skills with actual tangible skills in terms of training. And so I, I'm thinking about like, how do we begin to think about um, what does our NAACP units look like moving forward? And I don't know if anybody on the panel had anything to say about that as well. So the question was um, kind of like escaping a stigma that may be associated with NAACP. Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Well, I could I could personally speak on that. Um, not even just from what our organization may deal with nationally, but on a more personal level on my campus, the NAACP has not had as great of a reputation um, previous to uh, the last couple of two years. So a lot of people kind of coined us as an organization that didn't do anything. Uh, they didn't really see our efforts as um, fruitful and there was no members. Um, so upon the new leadership, we went from like five members to 34 in a span of two weeks. And the way we did that, it's kind of like rechanging your image, rebranding in every way possible that you can, um, whatever your values are as an executive board, as an organization, really pushing those, um, and then openly discussing if people may have issues or concerns, then asking them, well, this is your opportunity to change those things and be a part of changing the culture of your organization. and. I find a lot of times when you put um, the emphasis on the, the your main critics, they also have a role in changing and making the organization more of what it is. You're changing the culture because those people now have the choice to be a part of the change or to accept that change is coming. Um, so the way we did that more specifically is a lot of strategic social media. Uh, we advocate all our programs, uh, all our flyers we post and we try to make them fun. But then we also show the attendance and we show how the attendance is growing and we try to be more active on Twitter and, and we made a Snapchat. So just anything to get your name out there in a way that reflects your values and goals is great and will eventually change that culture that you may not be comfortable with now. Thank you so much, Annette. I appreciate that. Definitely uh, echo uh, what she says and the sentiments that she has. Uh, we got another question about youth and colleges are small in some areas as far as active members. Where do you get supplies? So um, I talked about the vote box, right? And so that's a really great goal to work towards. But if you are, you know, thinking that, okay, maybe you don't necessarily have the, amount of the, the right amount of people or resources um, either on your campus or in your community uh, looking for local partners, right? So kind of even tying into what um, Jeanette says about, you know, thinking about rebranding and reissuing in terms of who the NAACP is. Like, are there people who are willing to support the work that you are doing, right? One thing I tell people a lot of times is that college campuses always have money. There's always a discretionary fund. There's always um, some source of, of, of funding that is available to you and that it, all you have to do is find it and find the people who are in control of it. 
and either give them a proposal or be able to talk to them in a way in which they will support you, right? So how is this, how, how is them funding this and supporting the materials for your voter registration drive going to ultimately work uh, back to support the campus, right? Um, I know I've been getting questions about, you know, people are trying to go to retreats or get funding to go to trainings, right? Um, how can you get funding from your campus or from some community resource where uh, you can ultimately take whatever training that you're going to and bring it back to your community to help enrich your community, right? And so, um, again, it's going to require research and looking into what are the community wells in your in your neighborhood, in your community. And so I would suggest that in terms of looking at, like, you know, what are partners you can um, connect with. Um, Kyra, I had a question about, is there an agenda for the Region 3 retreat? Um, there is an agenda. It's still working on being finalized, but it'll be released soon. Thank you so much. And they can can they find that on the, the Region 3 Instagram page or when that comes out? Yes. I'll post it um, with the event right link for the registration today and also with um, the Region 3 Instagram Perfect. and spread it out that way. Perfect. Thank you so much. And it'll also be sent out um, through emails, the emails that we have registered. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, we have about four more minutes before we wrap up this webinar. Um, are there any more questions about any of the material that we covered tonight? We covered... Um, building your base, we covered up putting on voter registration, different tools for that. Any last questions before we wrap up? Any last comments from our panelists? I got a question about uh, Region 5 coming to train by any chance. Actually, I will be coming to Alabama um, in October, from October 5th to the 7th for the Alabama State Conference. And I'll also be coming to the Region 3 re retreat in um, Indiana. Is that right? In, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. So um, I'll be out there as well. And so uh, we definitely have youth and college staff who are going to be on the ground working with um, on trainings and making sure that uh, people get the experience necessary to do this work. All right, so it looks like there's not any more questions. So thank you all again for attending this webinar. Um, again, continue to spread this word, connect with people on your units, on your campus, um, in your communities. And uh, this presentation will be sent out after you complete the survey that's gonna be sent out about an hour after the, this webinar is over. Uh, real quick, I'd like to thank um, all our panelists for being on board, our trainers, um, I also like to thank Jonathan McKinney for helping us run this webinar tonight. Um, and again, stay connected on our Instagram, on our Instagram page and the BlaCP underscore YC for the most up-to-date information in terms of what's going on in terms of the youth and college. All right. Good night. Okay. Good night.